<clears throat> this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is the April 27th meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, a public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, April 27, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6027-21, Paul Rolla seeking to install a black chain link fence and rear yard at 108 Harmon Place. Application 6028-21, Poseidon, Connecticut, LLC, seeking to install 22 roof-mounted solar panels on front-facing roofs at 80 Garden Street. Application 6029-21, Nova 22 Group, LLC, seeking to replace eight Anderson 400 series double hung windows. Also install eight by 16 wood deck and Anderson sliding patio door on rear of home at 26 Wilcox Street. Application 6030-21, Taylor and Jonathan Mercereau seeking to replace front door with Thermotrue fiberglass door at 68 Oldham Road. Application 6031-21, Arthur H. Hutchinson Jr seeking to install six foot cedar stockade <laughs> fence with gate in rear yard at 32 Belmont Street. Application 6032-21, Brian DeCicchio, seeking to remove existing aluminum siding and replace with certainty double four inch vinyl siding in granite gray color at 310 Middletown Ave. And application 6033-21, John Weiner, seeking to construct new front steps, columns, porch arch and railings with PVC materials at two, uh, geez, 271 Garden Street. If you wish to review the application on files, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 12th day of April, 2021. Thank you, Chris. We're gonna jump right in. Um, tonight, we are missing one of our full members. Doug Ovian will be joining us late, so Kathy Williams will be voting. Turning to application 6021-21, the returning application for 14 River Road. If you would give your name and address for the record, please. I don't believe they're attending tonight. I believe they are looking for some fence prices. Okay, we will pass them for right now. And if they don't um, pop up later, we can table it again. Application 6027-21, the application for 10 8 Harmon Place. Name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Paul Rolla, R-O-L-L-A, and I live at 108 Harmon Place here in Weathersfield. Hi, Paul, welcome. Tell us about your application. So we are looking to put in a black chain link fence in our backyard. 
Um, this is really for the purpose of keeping our dogs in the yard. We have two hounds that if they catch a scent will be in the neighbor's yard in a split second. Um, but <clears throat> I will say that along our, the north side of our property, our next door neighbors have put in the identical fence that we're putting in. So it actually already butts up against my yard. Um, it would be approximately 231 feet of fence that would start at the back of our house on the north side, wrap around the yard and end on the south side of the home. Uh, there will be two gates on the south side. There would be a 10 foot opening uh, on the north side. There would be a four foot opening. And we have discussed putting in a third gate in the back of the yard. That would be a four foot opening, but we haven't decided fully on that yet. Uh, and I wasn't sure if we'd even be allowed to do that. So I figured I'd ask that question this evening. Um, but that's really the purpose. The, the fence will be five feet high. It will be black chain link uh, to match the neighbor's fence. That's like I said, already kind of running along the north side of our yard. So that's kind of the plan right now. I don't know if you have any questions for me at all. That's great. We have your plot plan. We appreciate that. It gives us an opportunity to see exactly where it's going and we all drive by your property. Um, the chain link is not great everywhere in the district, but I think, um, you know, for me and your location, I think I'm good with it. You said it's going to be five feet high. I'm not aware of any prohibitions outside of us about a gate on the backside. I don't have any problem with it, but I'm interested in seeing what everyone else has to say on the issue also. As am I. Anyone? I think, like I said, Jen, the plot plan is there. It, it's already an existing fence to the neighbor. Not a huge fan of chain link fences, but this is minimal impact on the district. Uh, and five feet high is not that. I have no problem with the four foot, with the four foot section in the back. Okay, thank you, Chris. Anyone else? And I see that uh, in the proposal that all the hardware is gonna be also black painted. So uh, it should blend reasonably well with the background. I agree. That is correct. It is all going to be black. Great, anyone else? Hearing none, do you have anything else for us, Paul? I think that is it, folks. Okay, great. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, 6028, application for 80 Garden Street. Your name and address for the record, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca. I am the permit coordinator supervisor for Posigen. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us about your application. Sorry about that. So we are trying to install solar panels at 80 Garden Street. They are black. Um, bear with me one minute. I'm trying to up. Oh, there we go. There'll be 22 modules um, on the roof. And I believe they are on the back side of the roof. Uh, they wouldn't get any sun if they were. I think they're all on the front of the house. Oh, yes, they are on the, on the front. I'm sorry. Yes. So, um, you know, we do have solar in the district, uh, but on the front of the house on a pitched roof such as this, it's a pretty hard sell. Okay. Does anyone what? else, uh, you know, a 1933's ha house on Garden Street um, with the panels all forward facing to the street is a, is a pretty difficult sell as far as maintaining the integrity of the house and the neighborhood. Okay. Does anyone have any comments on it? Just, any yeah. questions about where the um, utilities would go or anything like that from anyone? No, I, I, I don't think we should worry about utilities until we can get our heads wrapped around a uh, solar proposal as prominent as this one. I agree, Vasek. Thank you. Uh, do you have any other information you'd like to share with us tonight, Rebecca? No, ma'am, nothing on the top of my head. Is there anything that you guys would like to see? So 
I think certainly what bothers me on a proposal like this is uh, this, the discontinuity between the panels and the rest of the roof. Um, if the panels were, at least for myself, if the panels were covering 100% of that roof face, then it would read as a solid roof as opposed to something simply placed on top. Um, but that's, from what I understand, that's not possible with the arrays, the way they're built and installed. So, I mean, when yeah, it's we're our goal generally, from my perspective, is to have it as invisible to the public view as possible. Glancing views, you know, while passing by sometimes work. Uh, but an application like this, as you can tell by the silence of the commissioners, is a pretty tough sell for us. Um, okay. we'll, dis we'll discuss it more in the um, second half in our public meeting. Okay. That's all you have. Is anyone here from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Yes. Welcome. Your Hi. name and address. Yes, sir. Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Thomas uh, Lefebvre, and I live on 89 Garden Street, right in front of 80 uh, Garden Street. And uh, so good evening, Madam Chair, um, evening, esteemed commissioners. And I'm here to testify strongly in favor of application 6028, seeking to install solar panels. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, say that the Rainbow Center is a great neighbor, and we are lucky to have such a great institutions uh, in a uh, uh, weather sphere. And I support this application on the basis that there are already a series of electricity generation devices clearly visible in the immediate vicinity of 80 Garden Street. For example, just down the road, the house at the corner of Broad and Garden Street, house number 139, Broad Street, has solar panels on the front, half a block away, house number 50 Center Street, has solar panels on the front of the house, very close to 80 Garden Street. We have 200 and 200, sorry, 223 Broad Street has an enormous natural gas generator, this enormous box, and you can see the, the, uh, uh, the brand on it. It's not hidden at all. It's just right there on the side of the house. There is no gate, there is no uh, uh, plant or anything to hide it. And uh, we're talking about a device that causes considerable air and noise uh, uh, pollution. And so as a matter of coherence in the district, it makes completely sense to authorize this application. It is also completely coherent with the target of the state of Connecticut to achieve 40% of renewable energy by uh, 2030. And if uh, the job and American Act uh, passes, it will be 80% of uh, renewable by uh, 2030. So here we go. This is my uh, testimony in favor of uh, uh, application number 60, uh, 28. Thank you so much for your interest. Thank you for coming. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, which is 6029-21, 26 Wilcox Street. Your name and address for the record, please. Hello, uh, Daniel Moser. I live at 80 Silver Springs Drive in Higginham. I am the contractor doing the work at uh, 26 Wilcox Street. Nova 22 Group is my company. Okay, great, welcome. Are the homeowners also here? They couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, their job requires them to uh, be on Zoom calls uh, internationally, unfortunately, so they cannot make it, so I'm here on behalf of them. Okay, thank you. Tell us about the application. So basically, it uh, states that we're replacing just the uh, first floor windows, eight of them. Uh, basically, same design. They're the Anderson 400 series windows, which are wood interior pine, aluminum clad outside, which is basically pretty much the windows that you see throughout the uh, old Westfield being replaced on uh, many properties. And then um, we're applying for also for the back of the house. Um, they have a little sunroom, which they want to put a uh, sliding door that goes onto a a little balcony porch area out of pressure treated wood, roughly eight feet out by 16 feet wide, which is the length, the width of the sunroom itself. That's basically, I think you have some pictures there as well, which shows 
the house and the windows and the sketch of the porch as well, the deck. So I'm not sure if you can see this picture pretty well, but this is the back of the sunroom right here. And where this middle window is, we'd be putting in a, a sliding door, 72 inches wide, out onto the new deck with stairs going to the back as well. Starting with the windows, um, you're only planning on doing the front of the house? It's the front and side of the house. <clears throat> and a few of our double malls with the double windows together. So it's only the bottom, um, first floor of the house, nothing on the second floor or in the attic. So the two on the front side of the main body of the house, the two upstairs, the four downstairs, and then two out of the four that I can see on the sunroom? Correct, there's none on the second floor, there's only first floor windows. Nothing's getting changed on the second floor. They're not doing it this year right now. Just the first floor. Is windows. there is there a plan to do the whole house? Um, you know, continue the project next year? Uh, there will be right now. Unfortunately, they're just a little tan uh, the money. So they're trying to just figure out their budget to do um, the second floor eventually and something inside the house. So they want to concentrate on getting the outside a little more beautified and kind of doing the first floor where their botanical garden actually goes into their first floor as well. So it's a pretty interesting uh, house. Um, so they want to kind of beautify the first floor first and then work on the second floor attic afterwards as time progresses and more money comes in for them. And do the windows uh, have dividers and what is the pattern and are there uh, something between the glass too to create the shadow line? Uh, there is. It's specified in... Um, the specs I've submitted, they have the six over six uh, grills like the current house has right now. And um, they have a no, no tin on the glass itself, but they do have argon and low heat gas as well. Um, you know, nice windows, basically the historic windows, which you see throughout the Westfield, like I said, I said earlier. I had. Um asked Kim for some additional details. I don't know if you were able to provide additional details on the material for the deck and the railings. Uh, it's all pressure treated. I think it was on, there's just a pressure treated, well, basically the wood lumber. Because eventually they'll be, uh, you know, once it's weathered out, they'll be standing it to match the house. You know, but we don't really have a picture of that. We just have what looks actually like a metal fence railing, but that you're saying it's gonna be pressure treated wood? Everything's pressure treated. Maybe just the design for some reason shows it that way, but it's all on the quote sheet. Uh, you should see the quote sheet as well. Everything, all the material list says pressure treated. It doesn't give us any visuals of what it looks like though. I submitted the, the deck plans as well for it. It should be a printout. You, you submitted deck plans, which are basically framing. Yeah. And then, and then there is this uh, sort of 3D thing backing up on a brick wall. Is that the oh, one yeah, you're referring to? That's what the Home Depot gives me. They, that's what, that's what Home Depot yeah. gives you. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, it makes it hard for us to visualize what's going to be there ultimately. I mean, what? What Home Depot gives you doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's what you're going to build. And from this grayscale drawing, it's really kind of hard to figure it out. OK, so you're looking for some sort of architectural plans like AutoCAD, something to give you like a visual of. The we need to see what the railings look like, the stairs, what kind of material you're going to do any kind of uh, lattice work to on the bottom of it. So right, we, we have a we know what the planks and the joists and everything that's going to look like, unfortunately. You know, what is the railings going to, what are the railings going to be made of? Well, how are they going to look? And not necessarily architectural drawings, but a drawing, a finish. Yeah. And <laughs> photos, and of, sheet, photos yeah. of the product. Um, yeah. If you can take a picture of a deck that you've built that looks like it. Um, I had asked for a plot plan to see exactly where it's going attached to the house. Um, but right now we, I, you know, the pictures we have give us no idea at all of what this is gonna look like. 
Okay. Going so, back. Okay, so then you'll need um, physical pictures of what the, the lumber looks like exactly, the railings, a plot plan of where it goes behind the house. Yep. And so showing the back of the house, what it would look like with the windows and a slider as well coming out. Yeah. So yeah. As much detail as possible, because yeah. so we don't have to use our imaginations. You can show us exactly what it looks like. Okay, understood. Also, going back to the windows, uh, the grill bar width is spec as three quarter. I'm sorry. The width of the grill bars is spec as three quarters of an inch. Grill bar width is three quarters of an inch. Correct. Are there options for that in the Anderson line? That's a great question. I don't think in the 400 series, I think in the architectural series, which are a little bit higher up and a lot more money, uh, if that's something that has to be done to conform with um, the historic society, I can look into it. I just don't know the cost on their part. But as of now, I've, I've only dealt with three quarter inch sashes on what I've seen before on these kind of windows. The reason I'm asking the question is because a traditional, certainly for that period house, the traditional mutton is usually about five eighths of an inch. And granted an eighth of an inch isn't much, but it is a significant, you know, if you took, take percentages, it's significant and it's noticeable. It's noticeable to the point where you can look at it. And even if you're not trained, you can say it looks a little bit off. It's hard to put your finger on what looks off, but something looks off. Um, so if that's available, that would be a really nice thing to do. I can find out. I don't think in those series they are available. Um, like I, said, I just went by also what was down around town as well. I know those are also three quarter inches, um, you know, throughout the other houses I've seen uh, doing work out there. So I can find out, certainly see if they do supply that and, and see what they, what they tell me. That would be lovely. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions for this applicant? Yes, one quick question, uh, Jen. Now, there are railings on that front steps. Are you planning to match that railing on your this new deck? On the front side of the house? Yeah. Basically, be the same exact uh, layout that's the, on the front. Uh, they call it side, but it is the front of the house, yes. The side. So when you come back, say that's the railing you're specifying, or Correct. that it's would be an yes. example. Out of what? Out of pressure treated. Eventually, be painted the same way, but not now because it has to be weathered, of course, for six months at yeah. least. So, so that would include, and what are the stairs and the risers? That's what we're looking for. For sure, understood. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Okay, thank you very much. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move to application 6031-2168 Oldham. Hi, um, I'm John Mercero and Taylor Mercero. We live at 68 Oldham Road. Welcome. Thank you. We are looking to. Uh, replace our front door um, on our house. It's actually the original door that's been on the house. It's made of wood. Uh, we're looking to replace it with a fiberglass door because the current wood door is uh, cracking and starting to actually expand where you can kind of see out of it a little bit. And even um, in the hot summer months, it actually expands so much because it is wood that it gets jammed and you can't even get it open without going outside and putting your shoulder into it. So we're looking to replace that as a safety issue. Um, actually maintain the same exact color, same door hardware, um, and, and put the same exact uh, Anderson 3000 series storm door right on the front. Yes, same exact door, same, same color uh, uh, storm door with the front door. So the door is similar, but the um, upper light pattern and the paneling is a little different. Yeah, so I have a picture of the paneling is a little bit different. It's, it's going to be like this color. It's going to have the two front panels like that. We have that. I drove by and okay. took a look at your existing and it, um, you know, it's not a bad looking door, but it doesn't do a great job of replicating the look of the one you have. Yeah, it's it's because it's a wood door. So with wood, you get you can get more detailed. Um, a lot of the, a lot of fiberglass doors, you can't get that same type of detailing. I guess um, that's why it's different looking. I guess um, so. We can't like like you said, we can't get that same exact detailing. But the big thing for us was it's a safety concern with the house with the door. So 
Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? No. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or opposed? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, 6031, the application at 32 Belmont. Name and address for the record, please, if you're here. Okay. Yes, uh, Art Hutchinson, uh, Hutchinson Landscaping. We're the contractor who's gonna install the uh, fence. Uh, it's a standard uh, stockade fence. Uh, six feet high, and it's going to run uh, 50 feet on the north side of the property, uh, down the west side um, to uh, the middle of the house, and then go into the house and put a, a three-foot gate there. Um, three foot wide, as tall as the rest of the fencing? Yes. yes. Um, thank, you for, thank you for the plot plan. We appreciate that. And uh, it actually matches the neighbor's fence on the east side. Um, they have the exact same fence. Um, so um, I don't know if there's any questions. It's pretty straightforward. OK, great. Anyone have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, thanks for coming in. We'll move. Uh, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6032, the application at 310 Middletown Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Brian, I think you're on mute. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. Good evening. Commissioners, Madam Chair, Town Staff, Brian DiCiaccio, 310 Middletown Ave. Looking to remove the existing aluminum siding and replace it with new vinyl siding at the 310 Middletown Ave. So thank you for the sample. I know um, I drove by mm -hmm. and most of mm -hmm. the commissioners, I think, drove by and took a peek at it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, I know the material is different, but it doesn't vary greatly from what you have there already. Mm -hmm. what, it, what is there um, is aluminum. Um, it was, I think it was installed poorly. Uh, therefore, I think there may be future damage. There's uh, holes in it from utility contractors, the communication contractors from drilling holes in it. So I'm just trying to, uh, remove it, put new Tyvek behind it, install the new uh, siding to preserve it. The brick facade will stay the same. You're not touching the brick. Um, we're just trying to prevent any future damage. And the corner boards, um, the corners will stay the same color. They'll be the same color. Yes. No change on the wood trim. Basic, no. you're on mute too if yep. you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the trim around the windows is going to be dealt with how? The trim around the windows? Yes. Yeah, we'll, so we'll, stay, we'll, we'll, stay we'll stay the same. Okay. You're not planning on building it out at all? We are not. Okay. And Anyone else have any questions? Actually, I do have one other question of the contractor. Uh, was this house built with this aluminum siding or is this an application over something else? Uh, I don't know that. Um, I, don't know yet, huh? I don't know that, I haven't got into it. I, be I believe this was the original aluminum siding from- Okay, so that will make any repairs easier. Yes, from the, the little work that I've done there, I don't, it's not covering anything. So okay. if they took the original down and put up new, I don't know, but I think there's only one on there now. Okay. All right, anyone else? Thank you. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6033-21271 Garden Street. 
Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, John Weiner, 271 Garden Street. Tina Weiner's here as well, my wife. Uh, we <laughs> submit to you a, it's been a journey to get here, but this original proposal was given eight years ago as part of a larger addition on our house. Um, we finally were able to, to figure out a way to get this done. And more importantly, because it's the front and it looks nice. Um, we're replacing our current concrete steps and railing and overhang with a eight by five um, Trex platform. Um, it's going to go from window to window with a new overhang columns and railing system as well installed. Unfortunately, my contractor couldn't be here tonight, but we do have a bunch of details that were submitted with the application as well. Um, we think it'll be a great addition to our house. The, the stairs are a constant topic of conversation with our crossing guard at Hamner um, for the last eight years. <laughs> so it'll be nice to tell him that we're finally taking care of the crumbling steps that are out front. Um, he's tired of looking at them. <laughs> yeah, he's a little, a little he's a little concerned. <laughs> so I, time, so. I appreciate all your efforts in the last couple of days to try to get us the additional information. Yeah. Um, and it. the fact that the prior application had some drawings that were not included in this one. Um, I think that we had a chance to look at the um, trim work board was at Kim's house um, and that was helpful because I think that as I said to you um, earlier, some of the trade names that we use for ASAC and some of those things have right. evolved over time and, and what we thought they were is not necessarily what they are anymore. They're not a solid material necessarily. Sometimes they're shiny instead of being a flat look yep. stock that yep. could be painted. So that was really helpful. Um, I think the one big detail we're missing is the railings and the steps. Um, and you were, are you looking- As far as to, materials go? Yeah, to see what the um, actual sample is. I know the last round of emails, I think indicated that you're looking, or maybe from your vendor, that you're looking at some additional items still. Um, so yeah, I thought the steps were going to be the, uh, the same Trex material as the as the deck. Maybe landing. I'm wrong okay. as the landing. I think um, I was really referring but, to the um, railings on the steps. Oh, the railings, yeah. So, so I think I think Debbie Edzako did provide an example of what they were looking to use for that. Um, and uh, we can look back here and see if it's. She did send some pictures today, I believe, with that. There, w there was um, something sent. I yeah. think that there. Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. There was something sent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Going down the steps. So I think I think if you look at page one of the pages, I think it's probably page three. These aren't numbered, but of the application, there's a picture of the railing system. Um, so again, I'm not familiar with the vendors and, and what they were going to order from a um, you know materials perspective, right? Or what companies and all that, but um, that's what they were going to use. And I believe they just didn't provide that example of what was coming down the stairs. But I know they were going to match it to what's going to be put in on the sides of the of the platform. So is she going to be able to get a sample of that for us so we can see what it looks like? That's what she said in her in her email. But she also did tell me separately that she wasn't sure if that would be a cost to us. Um, I prefer it not to be a cost to us to provide an example, a sample of it. Um, but I think she was looking into it with Paul, um, for, for tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, because we can't again, imagine what it might look like. We prefer to actually know in advance, especially on the front of your house like that. Yep. Um, there are hollow products and there are products that are, um, more not necessarily solid, but more thick or have a metal interior that yep. are going to hold up better for you. But more importantly, the appearance um, that they not look like a vinyl fence. That's what we're really concerned about. Yep. Yep. Understood. Okay. Anybody have any questions? It looks like a great project. Yeah. I suppose one question I have is the columns are they going to have capitals and bases? Yes. If, and if you look at one of the pages, again, they're not numbered, but um, there are examples of the caps um, um, right here, if you can see it here. So those are the caps that we'll be using on the top and bottom of the columns. Is he talking about the columns or the, the railing? Are you talking the about the railing, railing or did you mean the railing columns or did you mean the, the tall columns? The tall columns. Yeah, so these are the caps that will be Oh no, those are those are. I'm sorry. No, you're those wrong. Are I'm wrong. 
You were right. <laughs> um, I didn't see anything there. I don't think so. I don't believe so. Wait, let me look at so our original plans when the architectural drawing from eight years ago, we did not have caps. Um, and I believe we're just keeping it the same. I just want to verify though. So I think, well, the picture that was sent to us later in the day, I don't think made it to all the commissioners from the plans eight years ago. So if we can get yep. those added to the application um, along with the other ultra, the details on the railings, that would be great. Yep. Okay. Again, I, I very much appreciate your efforts to get us everything over the weekend. No Does problem. anyone else have any questions? Do you have any other questions for us? Nope. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks very much. Hearing none, um, we will. I'll take a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Returning to um, application 6021, the application for River Road. Uh, they were not here tonight. May I have a motion? Motion to table. I'll second. Um, I think they're, as Kim said, working on providing us some additional details for shielding. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table is approved. Application 6027 108 Harmon Street. May I have a motion? Make the motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. I, as I said in our discussion earlier, um, I don't think that um, a chain link fence is necessarily appropriate everywhere in the district, but I think at this location, a little off the beaten path, um, you know, from the starting from the back of the house area, um, it's pretty well hidden. It has minimal impact on the district, and I think it will look just fine. Agreed. I agree, Jen. A drive by really is not minimal minimal impact. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved. Application 602880 Garden Street. Yeah, not to jump in, but did, did we check to see who was voting? I'm sorry. I did at the beginning. Kathleen oh, voting. I must have. Uh, sorry. That's Just okay. testing. <laughs> I still well, remembered. Thanks. <laughs> I'm engaged, though. I, I promise. <laughs> so, 80 Garden Street may I have a motion. <laughs> I'll make a move. A motion to deny. I'll second. So, I think you know, it's a difficult um, proposition on a, a 1930s house to put that many panels front facing where, you know, I think Vasek suggested maybe it would work if the entire roof was covered. I'm not even sure that would work from my perspective, but I think that um, it really does, uh, it's not appropriate for this particular house in this particular location. And I do think it ca would cause irreparable harm to the district to allow it in this situation. I, I agree, Jen, I think you'd mentioned um, in our uh, in the other section, the pitch of the roof is part of what we look at, um, and how visible, even when it is on the front, um, a very flat roof is different than a, a more steeply pitched roof. I agree, Claire. Thank you. Anyone else? All I agree. Oh, okay, gonna vote. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no, go ahead. If you have something. No. I agree, and I think the look forward from the neighbor was quite um, illuminating, um, but I do think that um, these sunroof panels, we have to be very careful, and we've been very careful um, where they go and what's appropriate with our, our colonial neighborhood, and I do believe that you know, as time goes, neighborhoods like ours will be more um, in mind when they design um, forward. So. Um, I, we shouldn't be afraid to, to say, let's let's think about this for a while and let's see what goes. It's really a good point, um, Kathy, because I think that the products are evolving. The mm -hmm. products we have now are better than they used to be. And I think that that will continue to be the case. 
Um, but you know, where we stand now with what's available, I just, I think it doesn't work in this location. Although and I do appreciate the comments from the neighbor who did have solar panels approved on his home, but you know, th th this uh, application, unfortunately, uh, you know, getting past the placement of the panels, we had no con in the future for this vendor, you know, where the conduits going. We had a, we had a, um, you know, quite lengthy discussion on the, on the public uh, speaker in favor of it, where we were running his conduits by uh, making that appropriate for that location on a back sloping roof. So hopefully that vendor, when they, if they do come forward again too, their plans would include, uh, you know, establish where those are going. Especially that. when you have two roofs, uh, you're talking about two uh, roofs here. Agreed, Chris, those are good comments. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion, the application is denied. Application 6029-29 Wilcox Street. May I have a motion? Make a motion to table. Second. Um, I think we discussed at length some of the details that are missing from the application. Um, I'm sure that those can be provided in time for the next round in a couple weeks. Um, and just as an aside, you know, I would be interested in hearing from the homeowner if they're going to try to replace all these windows, not maybe on this round this month, but in the upcoming months or in the upcoming year, uh, because seeking approval for all of them at once would make sense. Yeah, thank you for adding that, Jen. I had that note as well. You know, we try, we really try to at, at a minimum do a facade at a time, but not a floor at a time, which doesn't connect at all. Thank you. Agreed. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is tabled. Application 6030-68 Oldham. May I have a motion? For this, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Uh, although it's not going to, the window light, Jenna, you mentioned the pattern um, for more light, but I know security is a concern. There, we don't regulate storm dorms, so that's not an issue. Um, so I, I'm okay with that style. You know, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't love the door. I think that there are probably better options out there. Um, something that, uh, you know, the light pattern really screams I'm a replacement door. Does it need to be the exact same door? No, um, but I think that there are probably products out there that do it better for me. Um, and, and as you said, the screen door is perfectly acceptable and we don't regulate the temporary screen doors in any event. Any other comments? I, I agree with you, Jen. I think the door looks a, a bit modern compared to the other door. I, um, with with the light patterns, it, it, it is noticeable. Um, you know, it, it, it will do the job, it's the door, um, but I, I, I do think that there might be some better options available also. Well, and certainly if the applicant hears us say this and finds a better option, they can come in for an amendment to switch it out for something else. Sounds good. Um, like all the houses on Oldham, it's a great street and it's a really cute house. All right, so I will call the vote. All those in favor of approving as submitted, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, hearing four ayes, the application is approved as submitted. Moving on to application 6031-21, the application at 32 Belmont. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. All over Marked the it. <laughs> so Mark, straightforward, Mark, straightforward cedar fence. We've got a clear application as to where it is, um, matches the neighbors. Uh, with no, no further comments, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 
The application is approved at 32 Belmont Street as submitted. Application 6032 310 Middletown Avenue. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll, I'll second. Start. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, Claire. No, Chris. Chris has the second. So uh, the material for me, uh, it's, it's very similar to what they have there already. Um, we're not, not changing it up too much, uh, like almost a like for like, except going from aluminum to vinyl. Um, I'm sure it'll have very little impact on the district. I agree, Mark. And again, um, this product may not work in every situation and every house on the in the district, but for this house, it's certainly appropriate. All those yeah. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved as submitted. Application 6033271 Garden Street. Can I have a motion? We can motion to the table. Can I have a second? I'll second. Second. We talked about this at some length. Um, the applicants were very cooperative over the weekend when we were trying to rush for some additional information. There's more details we need um, and they can come back in two weeks. It looks like it's developing into a really nice project. I'm excited to see it, uh, but yes, I just need a little bit more detail for my vote. Agreed. Well, one thing that I'd like to ask when they come back is uh, the small overhang now it kind of is above the roof line. You know, it's this going to be dropped down a little bit where it's going to be flush with the with the soffit and the rake there or is it going to you know come across over over the tops of those windows that they mentioned so a little detail added detail detail to what they're going to be giving us yeah i think for next time we'll have the pictures from the original application with some tweaking it's a little wider but we'll have the pictures we need um, with some measurements that will tell us exactly what we're looking at. Okay, all those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion to table is approved. Moving on to the approval of minutes from April 13th. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'll be Doug tonight. As always, we <laughs> thank our fabulous Linda for doing such a good job for us and Kim for fielding our nonstop questions. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries, the minutes are approved. Moving on to other business. Kim, um, we have, are there any other public comments on a general basis aside from the two things that we have on our list tonight? None that I know of. Okay, so we have, um, Peter Gillespie, our town planner, is here to discuss with us some items of importance. Welcome, Peter. Good evening. How is everyone tonight? Hey, Pete. Thank you. Hey, I also have with me Chris Trazek. She's the chairperson of the uh, Heritage Tourism Commission. She's Great. going to uh, uh, work with me tonight on this. So I'm going to start. let Chris start it off, and I'll fill in the details, and we'll bring you guys uh, up to speed with what we'd like to talk about tonight. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Good evening. I'm Chris Trazik, Chairman of the Heritage Commission, and we are coming to you to talk about the Certified Local Government Program. This is a program that the Heritage Commission has been interested in for a number of years, um, primarily because it is a certification that is uh, for us as one of the oldest towns in the state and with the largest historic district, we should have the certified local government status, but it also provides access to additional funding sources in order to preserve and enhance preservation efforts in the town. Um, so we had originally looked at this program um, and doing the application ourselves. But when we got into more specific information, <clears throat> we realized that a number of the application requirements needed to be completed by the Historic District Commission. So we are here tonight to talk to you about some of the information that they need and um, encourage you to join with the Heritage Commission in actually applying for certification as a certified local government program. 
And I'm going to turn it over to Peter now. Thanks, Chris. Um, we approached the uh, State Historic Preservation Office and their staff were quite shocked and surprised that uh, Weathersfield had not gone forward with uh, this certification program in the past, uh, given the uh, history of the historic district in town and all the work that's been done in terms of preservation in the community over all of these years since the early 60s. So uh, the effort is primarily a, a, a compilation of all of the work that you've done and putting that together in a, a packet of information that would be submitted uh, by the mayor to the State Historic Preservation Office and they would then forward that on to the National Park Service for the ultimate certification. Uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, it does open up funding sources for uh, the town, uh, primarily in terms of uh, grants that might further aid uh, historic preservation efforts in the community. So we would need to pull together things like the, uh, uh, the ordinance that created the historic district, uh, your handbook and guidebook, uh, your rules and procedures, basically all the things that uh, you folks have, have done and operate under all of uh, these past few years. Specifically, we would also need um, bios from all of the commission members. Um, the application uh, likes to uh, qualify uh, the commission and their, their expertise. You don't necessarily have to be a historic preservationist, but you, you basically in the bios have to explain your interest and your experience in preservation. And it may just simply be that you're interested in the subject matter and you've been a member of the commission for many, many years. Uh, obviously, uh, some of you will have even uh, more qualifications than that, but they do ask that each one of the members uh, provide a bio uh, uh, expressing their uh, interest and experience and qualification in historic preservation. So um, I, I think if, if we work uh, with Kim and she coordinates with the commission, we can probably pull together the required information in relatively uh, short order, get it to the State Historic Preservation Office, and then ultimately uh, have them forward it to the National Park Service for uh, the dedication and the, and the certification that uh, the town is looking for. That's great. I'm sure we can get the bios. Everyone can do a quick bio within a week or so. Um, I, Kim, we had done bios a couple of years ago, I thought, for this, right? Correct. So it's probably only a couple people. We probably just need to update our positions and add the people who have um, been appointed more recently is probably, do you still have those, do you think, rattling around somewhere, Kim? I believe so. Okay. So we'll, everybody will um, put those together. And if you think, Chris, that there's a better form or we're missing information that would be helpful, you know, feel free once we submit them to email mm -hmm. us individually to tweak them. What else do you need us to do? This sounds like uh, we're always happy to have more funding. So we're happy to do whatever we can to help you push this through quickly. Is it's, there anything else you need us to do? It's relatively low hanging fruit. As I say, I think you guys meet all the, you tick off all the boxes in, in the application form. So I think um, I can sit down with Kim maybe in the next week or two, put a list together. And then um, if she can't find it, we can, we can delve a little bit deeper into the archives to make sure we can find all of that. So I, it's, as I said earlier, it's uh, really just tracking down some things, uh, pulling them together and, and getting them in a, in a cohesive packet to submit to the, uh, to the State Historic Preservation Office. So uh, we really just wanted to bring this to your attention, let you know that we're working on this. And then uh, as we go forward, uh, a little assistance would be great. We can also send you, if it's of any value, uh, some bios from other communities that uh, you can maybe use as a model. Sure, that'd be great. Yep, thanks everyone. Um, you know, if you can get that to us right away, you know, everyone will provide their bio in the next week or so. Kim can probably provide us our start dates. Some of us are return offenders and have a couple <laughs> different stints on the commission. So we'll get all our dates lined up and um, get back to you as soon as possible. Certainly, some of these boards and commissions are unfortunately almost life sentences. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're glutton for punishment. We're gluttons yeah. for punishment. We come back. Yeah, Peter, don't ask me how long I've served. <laughs> right. <we're wrong. laughs> All right. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Anything we can do to help, we're happy to do it. Thank okay. You thank you. We really thank you. appreciate it. Thanks. Good night. Okay. Next, we have um, Maggie Downey. 
400 her for death. Is she here? Yep. I saw her earlier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Welcome. Yes, we're here. Matt's hey, here, too. We hey, figured Matt. you guys just would be really sad if we didn't show up tonight. Oh, it wouldn't feel like HGC. <laughs> right. Missing us already. Um. Yeah, so basically our goal tonight is to try to clarify some things, talk about some potential other options and get pros and cons from you guys. Because um, I do think we left last week not with clarity entirely and not feeling like we maybe had uh, fully communicated our project well because for us, thorough as an application as we had, you know, when it got to the discussion and people were discussing it, it was mentioned that it was like a three-story barn, which was not what we meant to imply at all. Um, so we just wanted certainly clarity on certain points, but also to make sure that as we move ahead, that we communicate to you guys better um, to ensure that if something gets denied, we understand why and that we, we have clearly, you know, that we feel that you guys have understood the project that we put forth. And I'm not saying you didn't, but that comment certainly threw me for a loop. And I was thinking, oh, I think, I started to worry that maybe, and you guys could stop me if I'm wrong, that because we'd used the Cove um, as a concept that our project was that big and it had only gotten smaller and smaller. And, you know, in one of our first meetings, I think Commissioner Mead had mentioned that it was bigger than her barn. Um, so I went, I did, I looked up those measurements, even at our largest, it was never that large. So I think we had this kind of like, from the beginning, like this concept that it, we'd submitted this gigantic thing and it's been smaller and only gotten smaller. Um, and so as we move ahead, we also want to be moving in a better direction. One, that we are clear at expressing those ideas to understand if you guys knew that wasn't the case, but you still didn't like it at the size it was and really understand the terms because I think we still don't understand massing or like what that standard definition is to you guys or subservience. Um, Cause we had tried all along the process. We had thought to kind of take your feedback and we had made some changes when we talked to the neighbors, but um, we do want to understand better going forward. Cause obviously like working with an architect is an expensive process. And I don't think we want to go this far down the path again in a wrong direction, you know? So Maggie, I just, I think I was pretty, pretty clear with my comments. And I, I don't know if you, if you reflected on them or not, but you know, for me, it's not so much the massing of the building itself, but it's the massing of the positioning of the building. So, you know, we've talked many times about, you know, you've got a big piece of property there. For me, putting, you know, this is just one commissioner's opinion. For me, that location for that size of a building doesn't work for me. If you move that back on the property or in another location on the property, it, it changes the whole perspective. And, you know, I, I I, I understand that you're trying to be, you know, really respectful to your neighbors and all that, but putting it in that exact location or even a couple of feet back from that location, it's, it's, it's just too imposing on the older 16th century home that's right there. I don't know if I can, I, I don't think I can make it any clearer. No, okay, but that, I mean, that does help clarify. So like for you, the size it became wasn't bad. It was positional too close to the house. On the property. Yep. I, and I'm only speaking for myself. I can't speak for the rest. I, I agree with Mark's comments. Um, and I think we all did fully understand the application once we got all the measurements and all the details finalized in that last round. I don't think anyone went into it without understanding exactly what they were voting on at that point. Um, and again, you know, I agree, it's a, a, a big piece of property and it's not necessarily that that size of a structure is inappropriate for the property. It's just inappropriate for the people who voted against it anyway in that location.
Okay. Did you have any other questions for us tonight? So I think we brought, I don't know if Matt has questions based on that, um, but I think we brought some potential other ideas of discussion um, uh, just to kind of get feedback on pros and cons, getting closer, getting further. Some things are positioning it differently and seeing if that's getting closer and further, but uh, would it be possible for me to share my screen and then I can pull those up? Um, yeah, but we're not, we can't um, really give you, it'd be better to have what your plan is in front of us instead of talking about ideas, which we've done a lot with you guys already. Um, do you have something specific that you want to show us? Uh, I guess I'm not sure I get the difference necessarily if we pull up like a concept and say, are, is this closer well, you know, or further? You know that we can't give you a definitive answer. That I understand. I'm more in like, I'm more would be like- Are you able to let her show her screen? I couldn't, can you repeat yourself? I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you let, let her show her, her screen? screen? She's got something she would like to show us. I think, she, I, let me check the, one second. I don't, I am not the administrator, so I don't have control over that. We're here at King's Mercy. Okay, she's all set. Um, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, let me see. Round two. The town had disabled mm. that function for a while because they had um, people crashing public meetings. We yeah, but it had, it had come back in the last. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it the it's checked. Uh, let me see. Try oh. let me try one more time. Oh, that worked. Okay, so a few concepts, and maybe it's worth starting with this just to see. Matt tried to put this together. It's not perfect by any means, but positionally, and we would want to talk to our neighbors before we like went further down this path but curious if the barn is over here, and I know it's not you saying yes or no, but do people feel better about it? Pros, cons? So so in this scenario, right, so I, this is, you'll have to kind of excuse the way I assembled this from Google uh, Street View. Um, so some of the angles are a little bit peculiar, but I think, it, I think it kind of gives you the concept. So the barn is actually, in this instance, set back to about, the, about where the addition comes off of the, uh, the Red House of 400. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about that far off the street. Um, so it's actually set behind the, the primary house. It's obviously basically in the placement um, on the property where the there's currently a shed. Um, so there's a bit of a shed there, but it's somewhat behind that as well. So the uh, the far corner of it towards the uh, towards uh, Joe Siebert's property. Right. Um, where where is the the beech tree? That's it's closer to the house. Yeah, that's the the the. You tell them the gardener, right? That's what I'm oriented towards. Yeah, yeah. The the big beech tree is much closer to the house. You can see that big beech tree. It actually has some color in it. It's a very large. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and there's a large there's a large tree in an odd monument um, to uh, <laughs> Benjamin Wright, uh, uh, sort of there in that sort of island between where the two driveways are are depicted. Yeah, right. This isn't a perfect representation because it's like clips from Google Earth. So like there is another big tree with swing sets. Our goal was like not to take down either of those two large trees. Yeah, both of those trees are represented. There's also a big telephone pole there, but um, uh, behind the telephone pole a bit, there's another large tree um, and we'll be behind that, uh, that tree somewhat where the beginning of the, the building will be. Okay. Yeah. If we're going to talk concepts here. Yeah, really just concept, high level. Here, here's my take on it. I see this house on the left-hand side and a barn that's tucked up against this early 20th century house that doesn't really fit with the 20th century house. It belongs over there with the old house. Okay. Uh, I, I and, felt a little bit the same way, Vasek. And my brain says, why is it over there? Yeah. Well, I think, Vasek, though, this picture might be a little misleading because I, know, I don't think the space in between where that, that barn would go is, is that big. four it's house not, widths away in, it, you know. It's right. not quite, yeah, it's not quite that much probably. Yeah. 
because but, Google fish eyes things, it gets a yeah, lot easier. But the barn is with the 20th century house, not with the earlier house. For sure. In in the way it will look, I think that's yeah. definitely true. And that that it's it's a bit awkward. It, it certainly could happen. I mean, historically it certainly could happen, but you know. Well, that's why uh, they I mean, put the property and they built a new house right next door. That happens. Yep. <laughs> Claire, Claire right? knows. That happens. <laughs> that happens when properties are subdivided over the years. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's my take on that view. Yeah, it separates. Well, it, I, I guess one of the things we were looking at was right, really putting some separation, right, because we don't want to overwhelm the. The historic home, right? So right, we're right. Trying to give you guys the visual separation to feel like we're not, you know, uh, we're not doing something that encroaches. Um, well, I think what you heard at prior meetings was um, set back further so it's not um, imposing on the house was important. And I think you've accomplished that. And I think as close to the house on the other side as it was, um, you've accomplished that. So I think, you know, you, you answer your own question in putting it where you put it on this um, presentation tonight. Yeah, I think our, my question was a little bit exactly what Vasek brought up is, do you guys feel like it's awkward to be so close to that 20th I mean, century house? I mean, with the, ex with, the, with the exception of the exaggerated view, yeah, yeah. I don't find yeah, I don't find this awkward at all. I mean, again, you know, if I look at some of the other properties on Hartford Ave that actually have some pretty large mass barns, you know, um, the Monroe's, for example, you know, it's set off and over into the corner of the property, and it makes perfect sense. So, you know, to me, you know, this, you know, this is. Um, guess a little bit um, along with what we were trying to you know explain as far as keeping it away from the you know the historic home so it accomplishes that yeah for sure and as I'm I'm looking at the picture I'm assuming you can't you, know, you have a drain cut thing and I'm assuming you can't move your driveway there Right, like, the driveway can't be there, right. and uh, we don't want to. We don't want to remove the large beech tree or anything like right. that. Right, well, which would be so. the next piece. Mm -hmm. And you've got yeah. a telephone, a telephone pole. If you move it any further left, although you can move telephone poles, but yeah, it's possible. Oh, it's possible. Um, and there's a monument there too. So we actually have have a lot of obstacles uh, to putting a driveway in on that side. I hadn't considered until we started walking it a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if we're allowed to move a monument left or right. I bet you could get that done. Kim, yeah, yeah. You, it's a big Kim, can you bring up the um, Google Earth picture of the front of the property? Yep, one second, please. Is that the last slide, Matt? Uh, no, we have others if you want to take a peek. We were wondering if, so the crochets have kind of this bump out on the front. If maybe we did that, that could like set it back or make it appear set back further you mean without setting it back as far? Network? in the same location that it already was proposed in so the yeah. original proposal set back a bit more and then sort of using a shed on the front to basically diminish the the initial height of the building so that it, uh, it appears more set back while still sort of maintaining some of the length we were asking for although ours would be enclosed i think theirs is open so ours would have doors on it right. yeah so but i don't know if if, just, if the thought is still too worrisome or no that might work but still on the same size building just adding a bump out on it still with the barn gabriel gambrel roof line yeah basically like our presentation but with this and maybe playing a little bit with where it's positioned although again i we are concerned about encroaching on neighbors that's our concern with moving it to the other side too so, so like a barn but with an added something on the front of a barn so it doesn't it looks less barn like um, yeah it would look well it look like a barn with a shed added to the front of it at some point yeah yeah i don't know how that would look on the the style that you had designed currently i'm not exactly sure yet either <laughs> um but uh but it's a concept we tossed around in a way to to move the uh, sort of move the massing backwards 
um, right. without necessarily giving up the first floor space we needed for both cars and equipment. But that doesn't move the massing backwards at all. It just tries to soften yeah. the look of the front of the barn. Well, I mean, it does push the, uh, the you know, there's a front roof line and then a rear roof line. So it does push the higher. Yeah, but that's, that's not for me again. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I tried to be clear. That's, you know, it's got, if you're going to have it on that side, you've got to go back. Okay. You've got to go back. Away. I mean, I think, I know you were looking at some of the other applications in town, um, the one on Hartford Avenue across from Stillman. And I pulled that up to look at it myself and they positioned their barn. Um, I believe it's either 30 or 32 feet behind the house. Yeah, but in the way that they did their addition off the house, I think they can enter, you know, like they don't have to walk all the way around their house. And we potentially would be able to up the new deck on the side upstairs into the addition because we have a door on there but it's not, there's not easy access from that side of our house, you know? Right. I think your access is easier from the opposite side of the house. Your entryway is the, can we use, where the kitchen is, but that's oh, it, what you're hearing. It, it's yeah, really can we use north and there. south instead of opposite? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, the north, the north side doesn't have a good, a good entrance point. You're, you're right about that. But uh, the rear, the rear north side really doesn't have a good entrance point. Um, at all, so, but the, yeah, but your the entry, side, the your entrance side is on the south of the house mm -hmm. that you're getting into your house in the south of the house. I mean, do you enter your house from the right. basement? No, no, no. We enter it from, unless I have a class, I enter it from the south more often. Right. So I, I mean, I think that argument is a non-starter. Well, I think. Oh, no, no. It, I was yeah. saying the further we push the house back on, if we put it on the, the further we push the garage back on the north side, we have to walk all the way around the house because we enter on the south. Pushing it back becomes more walking, I guess is the short of it. Um, so the further it goes back, the less functional it is as a garage. The so only thing- On the looking, design, you had a stairwell coming up the back on the north side. In right, the, and so that's what I was saying, like we could start entering our house from that point, but it, I mean, it would be changing where we enter the house from. The only thing I'm, I'm seeing looking at um, this picture, thank you, Kim. Um, I mean, the only other idea I, I can think of is could you have your driveway where you show it on the far south edge of your property and then have it come across and move the barn further north? So you can't have your driveway right now where the curb cut is. No, that's not the right word. The drain is. Drainage, yeah. But could you have the driveway south and then have it move, just come in a curve and come up? And there, it's more concrete or asphalt, but there's some great ways to soften that. Just a thought. It also, it actually, it pulls it a little closer to the house, still further away, and then you're closer to your south entrance. It's more convenient for us. We are we are moving it to the extreme of the lot, and primarily because there's houses across the street with a view, and we we're probably going to completely dismantle their view of the curb if we do that. Guys, what are you going to do about if this would be something that you would consider? What would you do on the north side garage currently? Would that stay in that curb cut in that driveway? Well, I do think, I mean, the state of affairs of that, something has it's, to happen. Let's assume you're repairing it. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I oh, mean, would if we keep, we, you know, that would, would go. We keep that a driveway? Well, you have a curb cut there now. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm I just curious if that was in your plans because you, you're going to be probably losing your shed on the south side, right? We would be losing the shed. in the barn. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Although the size of this barn is large enough to keep the uh, lawn equipment in there probably. But is that where we see the front to the right hand side, is that about where is that how far back from the curb is that or where, the where, of, where are you proposing? The front of the shed. Or thinking about or where would the front of the garage go I guess. Yeah the front of how the garage so, um, so you see that big tree I think it's a maple tree um, yeah. that kind of has branches going everywhere it doesn't have the, the leaves on it. 
um, that tree would be a few feet in front of the start of the garage and it would be maybe like 10 feet or so to the right of that tree and behind it. And the depth, any idea of the depth? Um, from the I think we had proposed, I think uh, we were at 34 feet deep or something like that. I don't know how far that is from the road though. But uh, so it would, start, it would start there. I think that's a good, it's roughly the depth of the, uh, where the addition is. Okay. Um, so it starts, starts behind the house. On the south, yeah. Yeah, it starts behind, it would start behind the house and it would go back about 30. So to Claire's point, you have a storm drain there, but if the driveway, the curb cut that would go to the left of that and a slight S curve or S driveway or what whatever. Or just a bend. A bend of some kind, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what we would do a single, like a single lane, kind of what I, what I drew out was kind of a single lane to the right of the uh, telephone pole there. And it would drive basically right into the garage and then there'd be kind of an apron so you could move into the other bay. Oh, so, so you would go, go to the right of that, so you still have yeah, the space. Yeah, we go between the pole and that, uh, that tree, I think. Um, uh, it's a little hard to tell from this whether or not there's depth enough to do that. But. So you go between the pole would be on your left and the driveway would be on the right. Yeah, the right, the drive would be. Oh, so you still have plenty of room there. Yeah, I, I think I think there's enough room to do a single a single car wide drive through there, which is probably all we'd want to do. Matt, where's you can almost have? I'm sorry, Mark. You can almost have your garage doors facing the neighbor. Can you ask Kirk? Can you curve into it, or is there room to orient that where the? Uh, that would be that would be interesting. One of the things about that is we're we're trying to avoid a, a fill situation, and so it's kind of hard to see from this is that it drops off pretty precipitously on the left hand side. But the right hand side is is up a little bit higher. The grade so, is better, yeah. Yeah, the grade is a little bit more more easy to receive the, the building. So do you have other pictures you wanted us to see tonight? Yeah, I don't know if they've become I think as I come to understand better some of the concerns, we can kind of show you. We were kind of looking because multiple people had recommended um, what they had done at 120. We thought, I mean, minus the cupola, this might be closer to, you know, what you were thinking of. But then I'm, I'm presuming this would still. Oh, um, can you guys let me yeah. share that? Sorry. Um, Is that the James Francis house? Yeah, the James Francis house. I'm presuming that this would still seem like big for you at our current, the, the north side location that we had pitched earlier. Yeah, we we had talked about a scenario where on the if we went to the north side, um, doing something where it was a, a story and a half barn about the same height, but um, we went with this sort of salt box shape, but instead have the salt box oriented differently, you know, so the the salt box would run north south, um, with the uh, the low end facing the house, and that would move the roof pitch significantly away from the house. Something so like this, except reversed. The inversion of, uh, of this guy. But ours would again be a little taller than this so that we could have that upstairs space, but it would be like the smaller end is on the house side. I don't, I don't know thoughts on that. So it's again, the north side to me, it's gotta be pushed back. So, you know, as long as, long as you can get it down, you know, down the hill a little ways behind the house. Okay. So even something uh, along these lines, which would sort of distance it because the small side would be on the house side, you'd still be interested in having further back. Yeah. Okay. okay. What's okay. the house next to 120 Garden Street? Because we did approve a, bar, a new garage. It's the house immediately south of... Uh, the Francis house? No, it, it is the James Francis house. It's there. No, there, no correct. But oh. prior to that one, more right next to it, yeah. immediate house next to it south. It, we also approved the new garage, uh, separate, oh, is, similar, not quite as big the, as the one at the Francis house. Is that the house. Clark, uh, the Clark residence? Um, I, I don't know who lives there, but I don't know if it's 118 or 116, but it is as you head the, towards Sacred Heart. Yeah, was that red, was a few years ago. That is, yeah. that's even smaller. Yeah, right. it's a small garage. But again, squat. also built, stick built from a little yeah. closer to the house, not as large a lot. Yeah. That's more of a carriage house style. 
because it has to transom over the door, the windows. Yeah, it's a little different. I mean, we are hoping to do something, you know, that is pretty primitive. So it does sort of match up with the house. Although, you know, what are your thoughts if we are moving it so that it sort of sits next to, uh, sits next to the, uh, uh, what I, I'm not sure what year the house uh, next to us was built, in early 1900s house. Um, you know, would it make sense to make it stylistically closer to that house? No, I think because Claire, too, you know, things change. People plot, they get subdivided, outbuildings are left. Um, okay. Not I mean, a problem for I like me. The, I like the, con I'm sorry, Chris. I like the concept that you were trying to make it look like the Cove Warehouse. I, I, I thought that was yeah. completely appropriate. I just. It, yeah, and I don't, I wouldn't describe what you proposed as primitive at all. It's got lots of modern windows in it, it's got a balcony off the back, you know, it's got, modern lights on the sides. So I don't, you know, I don't think it oh. reads primitive. Well, I mean, we, we didn't do any, we didn't do any lights over the doors. I mean, we took a lot, we took a lot out of it, right, from the original design. Um, and we could go, we could go more primitive with it if you guys think that's more appropriate. <laughs> um, you know, there's options to do that. I mean, there's some things we probably needed to do, like be able to have light <laughs> so we can see, but, um, you know, the way we do the lighting can change. We're pretty flexible around that stuff, depending on what the, whether you think it wasn't primitive enough. Because I think we can, we can work some of that stuff. So if there's elements you think could be more primitive, you'd be up for that. Uh, but yeah, the rear of it had a balcony, so we were we were more focused on the front, I think, in terms of making it seem uh, so, a little more period appropriate. So I guess I'll I'll, I'll finish my comments with, um, you know. With, with, with what I started with, you know, I think you guys had a really good application, but location, location, location. I think that makes it pretty clear. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we are starting with a building that's seven feet proud of the house. So location, location's already been dictated to us in some ways. Um, so you've got yeah, a beautiful well, addition. We're very excited about that too. Yeah, well, we, we thank you guys for, uh, for supporting that. That's going to make our lives a lot better, actually. All right. Well, thanks for coming in again. We appreciate it. Um, you know, if you have some other ideas, please feel free to send them through Kim. And um, we'll see you when you've got a new new application for us. Can I just ask uh, one more clarifying question? So um, we had talked about at one of the meetings, pushing it back and staked out the yard that way. But then we talked to our neighbors and they were not liking how far back it went. That started about, that didn't start lined up with the back of the main house. It was still forward of that. Is the barn on the north location not kind of in consideration for you guys unless it like begins at the, at the back of the original house or is there wiggle room as to where it starts in relation to the house? So we were talking about an additional seven. So like a 14 foot pushback from where it currently is versus the seven that we proposed. I would, I mean, I would have to see it, see it staked out. But for me, I mean, it would have to go back away, so it wasn't so intending on the original house. Okay. Okay. Well, we, Kim, do you have a report for us tonight? I do not. And is there any additional correspondence that we need to consider? I don't have any other. Correspondence. All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn if everyone's all set. Uh, uh, make that motion. I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The meeting is closed. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Everybody.